Good evening. We are now just past the halfway mark when it comes to the 21-day nationwide uh, lockdown to uh, take on the spread of the coronavirus or COVID-19. Right now, 79 people in India have died after being infected with the novel coronavirus or COVID-19. There have been 472 cases in the last 24 hours. The total number of cases uh, now in India stands at 3,374. The doubling rate, that is, how many days uh, it takes for the number of COVID-19 cases to get doubled in India is 4.1. That means every four days, the number of cases, positive cases in India doubles. But the good news is that the ICMR has confirmed that COVID-19 is not airborne. So every day there are new updates and studies and policy changes when it comes to tackling COVID-19 and to help you keep up, to help you keep pace, we have this show for you where we bring you the best in the business, the best doctors, the experts. Uh, we get them here on our shows to answer any questions and queries that you may have about COVID-19. And today we have uh, Dr. Ashok Ratan, who is a former laboratory director at the WHO, Pan American Health Organization, of course. Uh, and um, we also have Dr. Jyotsna Agarwal, professor and head of Department of Microbiology at the RML Hospital in Lucknow, joining us. Uh, so um, first and foremost, if I can start with both of you doctors, uh, the big story, of course, today is the U.S. president requesting Prime Minister Modi uh, to remove the ban on the export of uh, hydroxychloroquine tablets. And I can tell you that since then, everybody's been Googling uh, these tablets. What are they? Uh, I thought they were meant to treat malaria, but now everybody seems to be wondering Wanting them, if you walk down to chemist stores, which still are open uh, because they're essentials, you see all these stores saying they're sold out uh, of this. What is um, hydroxychloroquine? What is it treated for, and can it actually treat COVID-19? Yeah, Dr. Ratan. You. Yeah. Uh, see, chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, uh, it's an anti-malarial drug. Uh, it has its long acting. One tablet will last for about 21 days or so in the blood. And it is also anti inflammatory. So I think it is acting against uh, COVID 19 because, of, because the death occurs as a consequence of cytotoxin uh, produced, which is, uh, which is known as cytotoxin strom. Hmm. And because of the strom, that it, can, it has anti-inflammatory activity, it may not have any antiviral activity, but because of anti-inflammatory, it is life-saving because of that. No, but Dr. Agarwal, does that mean everybody should take them? Surely uh, there may be side effects. Is it okay for people to take this uh, pill? Okay, thank you for this question. I'm glad you asked this. Actually, there are very specific guidelines as to who has to take this because the data available to support whether it can really protect you 100% against COVID is very flimsy. So the guidelines which came out from our Ministry of Health on around 22nd of March were very specific that they are meant for either healthcare workers directly involved in the care of COVID patients or the asymptomatic family members of people who've been tested COVID positive. And this is for profile access, you know, that means it's for asymptomatic people. Correct. It's before you develop symptoms. And these conditions are very specific. And because again, like I said, the, the studies on, on which this data is based are, you know, very uh, far and scanty. So it's so, not but, uh, for everyone. Especially given that, uh, doctor, uh, is this available over the counter? And could it be dangerous? Could it be harmful to people who may be watching the news yes. and seeing the headlines saying that America wants them, so maybe they sh everybody should go and, uh, go and take one? Is that dangerous? Yes, that is, that is very dangerous because it's not a safe drug per se. It has, it has you know, various side effects, especially cardiac toxicity. It wow. could even have a hypersensitivity reaction. So people should not take it, first of all, without a doctor's prescription. Secondly, if they develop any adverse effects, it has to be reported to doctors. And thirdly, like I said, it doesn't, you know, it's not proven that it 100% protects you against the disease. So even for healthcare workers, when it is recommended, they've been told not to sort of live in under false, uh, you know, sort of thing that they, 
they like no longer need to use uh, those protective equipments, uh, wear a mask or practice social distancing. Those have to be done. And then as an add-on thing, just for healthcare workers, like an extra protection, hmm. this has been sort of advocated by Ministry of Health, but not sort of proven to... Uh, okay, have I do have more questions on this. Uh, I'd like to probe this further, but let me... I have some callers. Satya Narayan from Hyderabad joining us. Uh, go ahead, sir, with your question. Uh, sir, how do I check my immunity level? If my immunity level is high, still I'm attracted with coronavirus, See, this immunity level will be, because this is a new virus, none of us has immunity. And this virus seems to be very infectious. As a consequence, it is spreading from one person to another person through fomites, as they say, and it stays in the fomites for a long period. As a consequence, we have no previous exposure to this virus. As a consequence, we have no previous immunity. Now, the infection seems to be mild in majority of cases. In 80% of cases, it's mild. Uh, some 10% are admitted, and out of those 10%, some of them needs ICU. If they have predisposing condition, especially if they have predisposing conditions to the lungs, then they are at severe risk. And the deaths have occurred of those persons who are over 65. No, but doctor, now, that, now that you've said that, can I just ask you, because on Saturday, the health ministry said that 42% of the corona positive cases are aged between 21 and 40 years. And I felt the literature on this and what um, I certainly have been saying in the past in our shows is that people above the age of 60, as you just said, are more vulnerable or they, you know, we see more deaths in that range. Yes, yeah, see, infection would occur to everybody because since we don't have any pre-existing ant antibodies or immunity, infection would occur. But uh, it is presumed that it will be mild in majority of the youngsters and it's the serious deaths, etc. will occur in the elderly. So All the right. elderly so need to be more careful. So 42% of these cases, age between 21 and 40, could be carriers, but the deaths, uh, you're saying, will still be above 60. Okay, that helps. That uh, clarifies things, certainly. Rahil Rahman from uh, Anantnag has a question. Mr. Rahman, go ahead. Uh, hello? Ha, go hello? ahead, Mr. Rahman. Hello? Mr. Rahman, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead, sir, with sir, your question. My question is, you know, is COVID-19 airborne, you know, does it transfer through air? You know, although I had read many articles, you know, before that it is not airborne, but, uh, you know, I'm seeing, I read two or three articles from last one day shared by many people on Twitter that it does transfer through air from one body to another. That's first question. The second one is, you know, is there any, you know, uh, specific diet, etc., you know, about COVID-19, you know, we uh, should <laughs> Uh, okay, so Dr. Garwal, perhaps you can take that question. We know that many people are concerned about this, so much so that the ICMR has actually today said in that daily press briefing that the health ministry holds every day that COVID-19 is not airborne. Um, but yeah. clearly, this is a worry for many. So if, could you confirm that again, not just for uh, Mr. Rahman, but for all of our other viewers who are watching? Okay, of course. So uh, this is definitely not airborne in general setting. It's droplet infection, which means when we cough, sneeze, or when we talk, there are tiny droplets which come out of our mouth. So whoever is in contact is in close contact and, you know, gets these drops can get infection. But it's, it doesn't stay in the air after the drops die, unlike some other infections, unlike say, tuberculosis. So it's not airborne. But having said that, in hospital setting, in certain conditions, when there is aerosol generation, you know, when we're trying to intubate a patient and other things, in those conditions, in aerosol generating condition, it could be, but it's it's a very different scenario. So not for general public. So do not get confused. It's not airborne. Second question was about the diet. So a um, lot of, you know, I think messages have been circulating on WhatsApp and other things you know, what diet can boost my immunity. So I think I would like to put that, you know, thing in, you know, in a broader perspective that immunity cannot be boosted overnight. It's not like a switch that you switch it on or off. 
In fact, if you have, you know, if your immune system is in overdrive, you can actually go into a phenomenon called autoantibody formation, which is actually not healthy also. So generally, by eating a healthy diet, by staying hydrated, by leading a less stressful life, having enough sleep, light exercise, uh, you know, those things can keep your immunity, you know, on the, you know, go. And, you know, you don't really need to sort of, and you cannot boost it, you know, like that you go on taking certain things and you can keep on boosting it and that you will not get COVID. These are all myths. All right. So you can't just... Uh pop a pill and have more immunity. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Agarwal. But, uh, you know, Dr. Ratan, then the fact that uh, the ICMR again has been saying that this is not airborne, many have also said the change that we've seen in policy uh, and uh, the advice that we've been hearing from medical experts now across countries saying that, yes, everybody should wear a mask, uh, irrespective of whether you have symptoms or you have a cough or a cold. Wasn't that also because there was a fear that uh, this was airborne, could be airborne? See, uh, it will remain temporarily in the air. So it depends on how far you... But because it is not airborne, it will not move from one end of the room to another end of the room. Hmm. That means it is... Uh, you should think of droplet as a extension of the contact. But uh, I think it's a good policy for persons who have any respiratory symptoms to have uh, to wear the mask I think in Japan, it's a standard policy that anybody who has symptoms wear masks so that they do not infect others. It's not to protect yourself, but you don't contaminate the atmosphere hmm. and you don't infect okay, others. Okay, so wear a mask, stay six feet away, uh, whether or not this is airborne uh, or not. All right, we have a caller from South Africa, one of our viewers from South Africa, Praveen, joining us. Uh, go ahead, Praveen, what's your question? Good evening. Uh, I wanted to talk to me, uh, Dr. Josna Agrawal. I wanted to ask one question that there is a lot of thing I have seen that there is a, the, the similarity of the malaria as well as the COVID-19 is almost same. So what should be a very good precaution or, uh, or very good thing which, is, which will call the differentiate between malaria as well as the COVID-19? So if you can told us so I can also guide my colleagues who is feeling malaria and they are thinking that they are a part of the COVID-19. Good point, especially since the okay. season of mosquitoes are now, uh, is now starting. You're already starting to see them and feel them. Okay, so the, the uh, patient presentation for both the diseases are not similar. For malaria, it's generally fever with chills and dry girls. But whereas for COVID, it would start off with, say, sore throat and then fever, and it can go on to breathing difficulty because the complication that happens is pneumonia. So clinically, they are very two distinct diseases. I think because of the, you know, hydrochloroquine being used as a protective, that's why people are confusing it. But there are two clinically different diseases and um, there is no sort of uh, you know, confusion in that. Okay. And Dr. Ratan, um the fact that, uh, you know, we're starting to see mosquitoes, this is the time it starts getting warmer, you, the more mosquitoes are being seen uh, and felt. Is that an area of concern? Could this be spread if someone is COVID-19 positive and there's, is bitten by a mosquito who then goes and uh, bites somebody else in the family or nearby? No, no, uh, it's not transmitted through the blood. In fact, uh, when you, there's a study which said that... Um, they examined persons who were positive for COVID and they found that the maximum number of samples were in the respiratory secretion. Mm. It is excreted in the stool to a certain extent, but it's not present in the urine and it's not present in blood in the early stages. So that uh, from, the, uh, from mosquito bite, there's no risk of transmission of COVID. It's only through the respiratory secretions and the fomites. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you, doctor. Now we have Mushtaq from Srinagar who has a question for you. Hello, good evening. Good evening, mm -hmm. Mushtaq. Yeah, I just wanted to ask about the groceries or vegetables that we purchase from the market. Are they safe to consume like that or do we need to sanitize them in some way before consuming? Dr. Agarwal? I think if you can, yeah, if, if you can wash them properly, that would be just good enough wash them in running water nicely and uh, whatever food you know you've been eating uh, like cooked food should be cooked properly and it is safe because it's not transmitted by food 
there is a lot of you know misconception about not eating eggs not eating non veg food but let me clarify it's not transmitted via any non vegetarian food or even via egg it could be that the person selling if has infection or has coughed or sneezed on that and it's deposited as droplet then plain simple washing with running water will be good all right we have uh, jogeshwar rao from hyderabad he's a regular caller on our uh, doctor shows uh, mr rao go ahead uh, good evening sir again uh, respected doctors actually this uh, question is about uh, medicines uh, several medicines are uh, have been uh, in the news india for uh, hydroxy chloroquine french sanofi claimed uh, plaquenil uh, worked well and uh, as early as uh, yesterday uh, australia ivermectin uh, uh, they claim that it uh, kills the virus in 48 hours uh, uh, actually my query is any global agencies uh, studying this uh, claims of treating symptoms which uh, which medicine is working w- uh, well any learn from each other uh, that is leo uh, it's called uh, exercises are going on dr ratan yeah uh, see uh, one was observation that uh, the distribution of covid and distribution of malaria there was very little overlap then the second one as you said ever mectum from monash university the information has come that covid or sars co- uh, as, as virus 2 uh, da- is is killed within 48 hours with ever mectin Evermectin is normally used for taking care of parasites. So one single dose seems to be effective in vitro, but yes, it has side effects, and um, these are things which we should not use lightly. Uh, it should be on prescription, uh, and more and more. Normally, they will take leads from there and then develop new new drugs which will act against different stages of virus, mm. so that it is active against virus without causing toxicity. at the moment the virus has been with us only for 3 months it takes years for a new vaccine or a new medicine to be developed so it is only repositioning of already developed vex drugs that we can use at the moment uh, for life saving but ordinary person should not use it it's only for salvage of persons who are going not going to survive if something like this is not done now that you put a number to it doctor only been here for 3 months it really feels like a lifetime because things have changed so much over the past 3 months we have shabir from bangalore who has a question go ahead shabir yeah uh, yeah hi my question is with respect uh, to uh, uh, to, uh, to vulnerable people uh, i understand this particular virus has a bigger much larger tendency to induce pneumonia faster especially in those who are vulnerable my question is would a uh, anti pneumonia vaccine help until we have a formal proper vaccine just as a pr- uh, mitigation or a preventive measure thank you dr garwal <laughs> is there an anti pneumonia vaccine or similarly what about the cold flu oh, sorry okay uh, dr ratan could you take that could you take that question see um this is once it goes into the lungs then it causes pneumonia uh streptococcus there's a good vaccine against pneumonia which uh, is highly recommended for children below 5 years of age and uh, adults over 65 years of age and it's good but a pre-exist that is not a pre-existing condition if a person has pneumonia he would be hospitalized while if a healthy person inhales this bacteria this virus then it will set up infection and pneumonia so it may help there is no harm in taking uh, anti pneumococcal vaccine mm. but it will not have any specific mm. protection against okay. covid well i have a question and we uh, we have about 3 minutes left so quickly let me take the last caller captain emmanuel from calicut go ahead sir um, um uh sir i'd like to uh, address uh, dr ashok ratan as well as uh, the lady uh, the other lady now uh, uh, dr ratan you you belong to world health organization why 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 can't you have mandatory powers to have a one to one interaction with the chief executives of all the countries be proactive 
I mean to say, you you go to a Delhi uh, army cantonment, okay? The place is absolutely sterilized on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, uh, I'm not blaming WHO. The point now is, we are blaming Wuhan. We are blaming X, Y, Z. Now, it's too late, but still, the point is, why can't you call the shot? W, World Health Organization, as for me, sir, not only has to be proactively and preemptive, it has to have sweeping powers. If you call up Donald, uh, President Trump, he has to comply. I must say it is, it is worse than nuclear, nuclear, nuclear uh, disaster. Captain Look Emmanuel, I'm sure tomorrow, once the, this is all over, we we'll have to we'll probably have to do entire uh, shows uh, on uh, who is responsible, what uh, was WHO's response at the time, and was it adequate? Uh, was it enough? Could everyone have done more? But we understand uh, your angst and your concern. Many questions really arising from uh, the spread of this pandemic, uh, COVID-19. But I want to quickly, uh, if I can take another quest, uh, caller, but I want to just ask, I think many are concerned about this one one issue to both our doctors, uh, uh, Dr. Ratan and Dr. Agarwal. You know, many are expected to come out tonight on their balconies and be lighting candles in theirs as per what uh, the Prime Minister has requested. So there's a lot of literature doing the rounds, a lot of uh, WhatsApp forwards talking about the fact that uh, we are constantly putting sanitizer uh, on our hands and an effective sanitizer has to have a certain amount of alcohol content. Is that dangerous? Uh, what, what's your view on this? Uh, what would you advise our viewers who are watching? Dr. Ratan? Uh, I, I hope they will maintain uh, the social distance whenever they come out. If they maintain social distance and use common sense, I think uh, uh, there is no, they should not touch anything as a consequence. As they should not come out of their house. That's one. If they are inside the house, then the chances of acquiring infection from inside the house are minimal. So I think they should do it. We should all uh, show solidarity with the efforts that we are making. No, Dr. Rathan, uh, Dr. Garbal, just to clarify, the question was about is it dangerous to be uh, lighting a fire, yeah. playing with matchsticks while you have sanitizer on your hands? You should not have sanitizers so during that time. Alcohol. Uh, alcohol evaporates. Okay, so within a minute, alcohol has evaporated from your hands. So what is left is like, like no alcohol. So, um, I mean, if you sort of, if your hands are dried properly after you use sanitizer, there won't be any you know, alcohol left. So I, I don't think it's going to be. All right. So this is just a myth that uh, people's hands will start... Uh will be set on fire while they're lighting these candles or the others. But thank you so much. You're both our doctors today. I think we've covered a lot of ground uh, in this uh, half hour. Lots of callers. Unfortunately, we've not been able to get to each and every one of them. But I want to end by repeating uh, Dr. Ratan's um, words. He says, use common sense. I think uh, that's something we should just keep repeating to ourselves in all situations. Use common sense. Thank you all for joining us today. And we hope uh, this has been helpful for all of you, our viewers. Bye-bye.